In this video, we will learn about peristomal hernia, symptoms, complications, how we investigate it, and treatment. A stoma is opening in the bowel that is brought to the surface, that is brought to the skin. It can be an end stoma where the end of the bowel is brought to the surface or a loop stoma where a loop of bowel is lifted out and an opening made. The opening for the stoma is made in the rectus muscle. These are long strap muscles along the midline and they have two strong sheets, one deeper and the other on the surface. Openings are made and the bowel is brought out and stitched to the skin as seen over here. This then represents a site of weakness through which a hernia can form that is the contents within the abdomen, bowel specifically, can protrude out through this and present itself as a bulge underneath the skin next to the stoma as seen over here where the stoma is stitched to the skin, beneath which are the muscles and a loop of bowel has come out. There is factors for development of a stomal hernia which can occur in up to 50% of the patients over the first two years after the stoma is formed is quite significant. It is a type of an incisional hernia in the sense that it is a surgical incision that instigates it and causes an area of weakness. Patient related factors are advanced age, chronic disease such as chronic obstructive airway disease, infection around the stoma or in the wound next to it, immunosuppressed patients, those on, those on medications such as glucocorticoids, obesity or significant weight loss since the operation allowing space to develop between the loop bowel and the abdominal wall. Then there are technical factors. Patients who have an emergency operation are at a higher risk. If a large defect is made in the muscle, that may invite a hernia in the future. And use of a prophylactic mesh at the time of surgery has been found to reduce the incidence of a future peristomal hernia. The symptoms of an uncomplicated peristomal hernia include a bulge only without any symptoms, pain around the hernial site, dragging discomfort, backache, intermittent cramping, leaking from the stoma appliance, which makes it difficult to fit a stoma appropriately, and skin irritation or skin breakdown, both as a result of the leak or that related to the stoma itself. And these hernias can also be complicated such as incarceration where the hernia no longer reduces, it does not go back inside the abdomen and increases the risk of future serious complications. And finally strangulation where the loop of bowel as seen over here actually loses its blood supply and becomes gangrenous which is a life-threatening complication. Serious complications require urgent emergency surgery. To make a fully informed diagnosis of a peristomal hernia, a full clinical examination is performed by removing the device and asking the patient to stand up and then examine the patient lying down as well. However, the most useful investigation is a CT scan. A CT scan truly defines the defect and what is coming through it and also differentiates it from an incisional hernia which might occur in the midline wound or incision next door to the true peristomal hernia and indeed two hernias such as the incisional hernia and a peristomal hernia can exist together. This is necessary to make an informed decision about surgery and what route it might take as well as the extent of surgical repair required. In terms of treatment, it is time well spent preparing for, for the operation and thinking about prevention, improving fitness in the run-up to the operation, using meticulous surgical technique, limiting the trephine or the opening in the, abdo in the abdominal muscle, and after the operation, taking preventative care such as not increasing the abdominal pressure, learning to log roll, getting in and out of bed, and improving the tone of the abdominal muscles using specific exercises. It is important to point out that even if a stomal hernia has developed, surgical correction is dependent on several factors and patients could be palliated quite safely for prolonged periods of time. The stoma fixation belt is a device that fits around the stoma and provides support to it and this may be of use to some patients, reducing symptoms. For patients with chronic disabling symptoms, surgery may be considered provided they are fit enough to undergo an operation. It has to be remembered that up to 20% of the patients may recur after a seemingly successful operation, so this step is not to be taken lightly. These surgeries are best performed by surgeons who are experienced in such repairs. In an elective setting, a mesh is usually used to reinforce the abdominal wall, either on the front by pulling down the bowel and putting a mesh around the stoma and re reinforcing this area, 
or from the inside using the same technique. On the surface, it's called an only mesh and inside the abdomen, intra-abdominal approach. Here is an example of the use of a mesh inside the abdomen by creating a slit in the mesh and then an overlap. And this is the inside or the laparoscopic view of the bowel coming up and a mesh being placed around it. This is an example of a surface repair. However, this is deeper to the muscle using a technique called component separation, where not only a stomal hernia is being repaired, but also an incisional hernia at the same time. Less commonly these days, the stoma is relocated by taking it down from the original site and then bringing out onto the opposite site. Unfortunately, that site too runs the risk of forming a hernia and the surgeons may consider placement of a prophylactic mesh. There are several different kinds of meshes available, including both biologic and synthetic, and this is an area of ongoing research about which is best at this site. This completes this brief overview. Please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please do share.